New product time. Okay, uh, let's kick it off. Okay, we've got, uh, I had a wheel of these and I was like, oh, we am not using them, but we should sell them. These are the Espressive ESP32 S2 Warooms. Uh, they look a lot like the Warovers that we have in stocks. So you're like, what's the difference? The Warooms cost less and do not have PS RAM. They do have four megabytes of flash. There's no PS RAM. They have the you know 300-ish, you know, uh, K of SRAM. Uh, so they work fine in Arduino. You know, not doesn't work so great in Circuit Python because you don't have enough RAM. But uh, if you know you're using um, the ESP32 S2 in Arduino, these are pin compatible with the Warover, and they cost less. All right, next up. Okay, next up we've got a fab new product, the ISO. 1540. I know it says X because like I wasn't sure exactly which pin I was chip I was gonna use, but we went with the 1540. What is this? This weird beast. So this is a isolator. Um, you can sort of see a dashed line go through the middle of the board there, kind of from the top uh, left at the bottom right. So the two sides of this board, the power, ground, uh, clock, and data, are electrically isolated. Um, what that means is that uh, if you have circuitry where you have an I2C controller on one side and a peripheral on the other side, and you don't want them to have any electrical connectivity, like there's no conductivity between the two, you would use one of these. And um, it uses, you have to power both sides, right? That's the one trick is both sides need to be powered separately because they have different separated power supplies. Then the clock and the data line can pass data back and forth at one megahertz just fine. It's designed for I2C, although in theory, I guess you could use something else with it. Um, but it's really great for I2C when you want to have electrically isolated, uh, you know, uh, I2C controllers. And it's bi-directional. So it's called like multi-master and I2C. But the important part is you don't have to worry about which side is which um, because data passes through for SDA and SCL both ways for both of them. So you got to keep them separated. Use the ISO 1540 breakout. All right, next up, this is going to be pretty popular, especially once we start releasing more of our CAN bus stuff. This is a CAN bus to OBD adapter, which I keep saying ODB because uh, who doesn't love old dirty bastard? But it's OBD, uh, OBD2, technically. So in your car, uh, you may not know this, but there's a little port you can plug into and you can download your like statistics and your um, sensor outputs and like the details about your car. And when you go into, you know, when you have like a check engine light type thing and you go in to the mechanic and they like plug in a thingy into your car and they download and tell you what's up with your car. Like your, like, I don't know, your oxygen sensors is dirty or something. <clears throat> uh, they'll use something like this. So this cable, I do want to clarify that this is uh, not a converter electrically. Like, it doesn't, even though it's a serial port looking thing on the end, you don't plug that into your computer serial port. This is like a, like a mechanical converter. So it converts the plug on the right, which is like this weird, large, chunky D shape to uh, a DE9 on the left. Um, and this is a, because OBD is CAN bus compatible, you can often use CAN bus shields or feathers or whatever, um, you know, Raspberry Pi hats, to connect to and read data from OBD, but you know it's you need the right port, and the port that's on the CAN board is usually uh, the one on the left, this one, and the one that goes into your car is this one. So that makes sense. It's just it's just a cable adapter, but if you have something with CAN bus um, that has a DE9, chances are you can just plug this in, plug this into your car, and you can start reading uh, debug data from your automobile, which is super cool. Great for car hackers or analyzers, which is people who are like, hey, I've got this like computer with wheels. What's going on with it? Um, so uh, check it out. We do have the pinout in the product page. Uh, it uses what I consider the standard can pinout, but I know that there's two apparently. So just make sure yours is the right one. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, we well, let's do kind of a question on this oh, one. Yeah? Will we be able to like uh, do things with CircuitPython with this? Well, we have a, a can IO library in CircuitPython. Um, we don't have like the decoding, like you have to decode the messages to know what they mean. You will definitely be able to read the messages, but what they actually mean, uh, there's no library we have in CircuitPython though. Although there's probably one in Python that if someone's interested uh, for, they can um, port it over to CircuitPython. It's, it's likely gonna happen, it's just we don't have that right now. Mm. Okay, next up. 
Okay, next up. Uh, well, this is not a new cable, but we just have like a, now a, a, a combo page. Uh, so I know that people have been like, like, how come I can't get stomach QT cables? Believe me, we are buying tens of thousands of these and they like evaporate uh, extremely quickly. We're, we're trying to get more and more, but the more and more we order, the more and more they sell out. Uh, we'll sell this eventually. Um, you know, I can't get a, 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 a Raspberry Pi Pico right now or a PS5 either. Um, but when you go to a page for the um, QT cables, the stomach QT cables, you'll see which ones are in stock. So it'll be a little easier to, to you know, pick a slightly different size if necessary. Okay. Same and then uh, last up to start show besides you, Lady Eight, our community, our customers, and everyone hanging out in the chat, is this is the AW ninety five twenty three. We actually sell this on Reddit. You know, Reddit's good for some things, not just buying stonks, um, but also getting some chip recommendations. So uh, this is the AW ninety five twenty three. So we're gonna just look at this one uh picture for a bit because i gotta explain what's going on here so this is an i squared c expander what that means is you send i squared c commands in yeah, on, oh yeah, on the left or the right uh using the stem qt connectors or the breakout at the bottom and you can control 16 different ios now you're not going to control them as fast as if they were on the chip you know the microcontroller you're using but maybe you've got something like a like a cutie pie and you want to control 16 leds if it doesn't have 16 pins on it how would you do that you could use this expander um so this expander has 16 inputs and outputs. So each of these, you know, things labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 15 can be either an input or an output or, and this is kind of weird, it can be a constant current LED sync, which is unusual. Um, most expanders don't have that capability to do constant current with dimming. So if you are, you know, you can use this for buttons, you can use this for, you know, whatever you want to do expanding, uh, expansion to but if you're using with the leds it's it's particularly good because um you can dim the leds eight bits and there's no pwm so you don't get no flicker it's a constant current like perfectly smooth linear um dimming and second you don't need a resistor because it's constant current and that's why you see like there's the vin pads along the io you can just connect your led from the vin to the gpio pad and like Bob's your uncle, you can dim the LED, no resistor required. Um, so I think it's really great for LEDs. That said, it also can be used as an input or for any other thing that needs uh, IO expansion. Just note that it's not PWM, it's a constant current sync output. And let me, uh, maybe I'll even grab my cable here and I'll plug in my demo. So let's go to the overhead and do my live demo. Hopefully it'll work out. Okay. So here I've got uh, everyone's favorite. It's the uh, Cutie Pie. So again, if you want to drive 16 LEDs, you can't. It doesn't have 16 pins, but it does have the stem key connector. And then over here, um, and this is kind of neat, I just took an RGB LED and uh, I'll unplug this so you can see. I connected uh, the power pin of the LED, the anode, to VN and the R, G, and B to uh, three different GPIOs. Lock, so it's super clear um, and then again no resistors required and then uh, let me plug this in oh wow and it just like magically started working again um, which is impressive uh, it, and then it drives them with constant current and then you've got this you know beautiful RGB light and what's cool is if I shake it there's no jitter like you don't see when you normally you PWM you'll see the LED turning on and off especially when you wave it you're not going to get that because it's constant current um, there's only one thing that is a little annoying about this uh, expander is it doesn't have the ability to do built-in pull-ups or pull-downs. So if you use it as an input, you're going to have to add an external pull-up or pull-down. That's the only thing, though. And again, for LEDs, uh, you don't need those, and uh, it's totally worth it. I think it's it will be great for driving a large number of LEDs. With the address uh, jumpers as well, you can connect up to four of them on one bus. Okay, and with that is New Parks for the Week. Nu, 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 nu.